Hi, my name is Steve Travell from Make It Music. I'm going to give you a quick overview on WordPress. This is what you're going to be learning from this video. Why you should use WordPress. A brief explanation on all its main sections. And a quick modification of the WordPress 2017 theme as shown in the previous video by Ian. So, why should you use WordPress? I've used WordPress for at least the last seven to eight years, and it truly is the number one website software on the planet. You'll be surprised how many websites are using this, from blogs, through portfolios, through magazines, right across the board. This initially started out life as a blogging platform and has truly turned out to be one of the most flexible website building softwares on the planet. Yes, it's incredibly flexible and can suit any website need. There are thousands and thousands of themes that the user can use. This will supply virtually any kind of website that you can imagine to be designed. So a lot of them are templates where you can just then fill in with your own images and content. And some of them are more flexible, which allows you to build and create your own websites. There's also a huge array of plugins. So if you have any kind of specific need or function that you would like added to your website, you pretty much find it in the form of a plugin, which is something that you add to your theme to give it extra functionality. And the main thing is, it's an independent system. It can be installed on any server. There are many free uh, website building software platforms available, such as Wix or Squarespace. But what you're really doing is you're building with their template onto their servers, which means everything is contained within their system and heaven forbid if anything was to go wrong with any of their systems you have a pretty good chance of losing your website as this is an independent system you can have a plugin installed that would enable you to back up your entire website that means it would be very easy for you to retrieve it and reinstall it again on your server or on another server for that matter so let's take a look at a few examples of some wordpress themes in use This is the website of a band called Adult Cinema. This is a band we've been working with for the past few months that have adopted quite a few of the techniques that we've been teaching through this course. As you can see on the landing page, we have an Aweber sign-up form enabling them to capture the name and the email address of any user that wishes to download their four-track EP. This is primarily a one-page website, and as we scroll through, we can see we can get the social icons there for his social media, a brief biography, some access to some videos, some social proof, information on forthcoming releases, and right at the bottom we have the blog and yet another sign up form. So we've got two options to sign up even on the same page. The theme used on this website has been specifically designed for use within the music industry. It can either be used by a recording artist or a record label as it is here and it has pages and layouts that are specifically designed for displaying music and releases such as artists, label catalogue and information on individual releases. It's very clear, it's very stylish and all you need to do is really load up your information and images and off you go. It's pretty much like buying a website ready-made, off-the-shelf, tailored for the music industry. With this website, independent music producer Josh Garrels has utilised his homepage to get the information that he needs to get across to his fans quickly. At the top, there's a slider that allows people to pre-order his forthcoming release. That's followed by up-and-coming gigs and also a widget that allows you to sign up for a free download. And that's followed up by his extracts from his socials, from his Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Here, artist Lucy Zirins has utilised a WordPress theme, which is quite a simple, basic design, but it manages to get across the things that she needs for her music. On the homepage, she's used a simple three-column format. The first one containing video and latest news. The second one with access to the store, along with a widget from her Spotify account. And then gigs listed are here on the right. And at the very bottom, she too has a sign-up form for her newsletter. 
She has a series of other pages within the site here through her menu with an about page, news page, gig listing, image gallery, contact form, access to her store, and also a direct link to her YouTube channel. Hi, my name is Lisa Zirians. I'm a singer-songwriter from the UK. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoy the music. Even though some aspects of this design seem quite simple, she is getting across all the things that she needs to forward her career here. And finally what we have here is a website from Peter Hollins, he's an a cappella artist from the States. And what he has, he has a bespoke WordPress website made for him here. Yes, it all operates on the same sort of content management system that WordPress is, i.e. when you're in the back end, it works like a WordPress thing, but the design and the, and the way it's displayed has been specifically designed by independent web developers. Again, this is a one-page website, and as we scroll through, we can see all the different sections that he's using uh, to get his message across, such as albums, videos, up-and-coming events, a gallery, and then a contact uh, form and a newsletter sign-up. So that's a quick look at five different websites utilizing WordPress themes. So now we're going to quickly look at the kind of the anatomy of what a WordPress theme is. In my mind, there's really only three things you need to understand with regards to a WordPress website. The first thing we need to think about is what the home page is. Now, the home page can be presented in two different ways with WordPress. It can be presented either as a blog page or as some kind of static page. Now, the difference between the two is that a blog page is something that displays the posts that you make, whereas a static page is something that is a fixed content that remains the same on your site. So your blog page will be updated with every new post that you create for your website, where a static page will just be displaying the same fixed content. So then really you've got to think about what content you're creating for your website. Now, primarily there are two types. First up, there are posts which are generally the everyday news stories, updates, articles that you add to a website or to a blog. And this is primarily how WordPress was initially built. It was built to display uh, blogs and articles uh, in some form of magazine format. And the other one are pages. Now pages, uh, for example, if we go back to Lucy's site, are pages such as her about page or on some other sites the discography or the biography these are pages of fixed content that are on there so when you're in the back end of wordpress you can create two different kinds of contents one being the posts and the other one being pages another thing you need to think about is actually what are the components within the web page layout there are primarily just four sections here and this is pretty consistent through most website templates. The first thing really is the header area, which is the area at the top of the page. This would be containing the logo or the name of your website and possibly then the uh, navigation area as well, the main menu. Then you have the content area. Now the content area is the area that comes below the header. So the content area is where the posts or the information on the static pages appears within the actual layout of the web page. Now, to the right or the left of that, you would have the sidebar. Now, this is uh, normally filled with uh, widgets and additional information. For instance, uh, a Facebook uh, like box, for example, or adverts, as you see on some, on some websites. In a lot of themes, this can be positioned either on the left or the right-hand side of the content area. But there is also an option within Pages that allows you to have no sidebar that allows the content to fill up the whole width of the page. You also need to consider that in the, the mobile version of your page, uh, the sidebar will actually be appearing at the bottom below the content area. As with responsive themes, the layout is changed so you can see the content area more clearly, so it, therefore it places the sidebar underneath the content area. And the last section is the footer. The footer is a section that runs along the bottom of the website and this area is normally controlled with widgets so you can have a variety of content being displayed in this section.
Now let's take a look at all this with regards to the 2017 theme that we fitted for yourgreatband.com. Here we are with the 2017 theme, and the one thing I really like about this theme, as opposed to some of the other themes that WordPress were giving away, is that this is the first theme that actually gives you a full screen image as part of the home page setup within the theme, which is great for promotion. Uh, you can have a nice big picture of your band here, and I'll show you a little bit more about that later. So let's have a look at those components I was talking about earlier. So if we hit the arrow button here or scroll down, we can see we're presented with two sections. The section on the left here, this is the content area, and the section on the right, that's the sidebar. Now, in the content area, at the moment, this setting for this page, for this version of the home page, the setting is set for blog. And that's why we're seeing the post extract that Ian created earlier. If there were more posts created, we would see a listing of all the different posts of which you can click and go through to each post individually. On the right hand side here, yep, we got the sidebar and the sidebar at the moment is populated with the standard WordPress widgets, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. Once we've scrolled down and we can see here underneath this line, we have the footer area. Okay, so let's have a look at here. The widget section you'll find the widget section under appearance here in widgets and you can see here straight away this is the list of widgets that are appearing in the sidebar and here we have two widget areas for the footer and i'll briefly show you if we just drag a widget into here and a widget into the other one here let's hit save on both of those Go back to the page and refresh the page. We'll see at the bottom now we have content created by widgets within the footer area. So we have the footer, the sidebar and the content area. And as I said, this one is displaying blog posts. The top area here on this home page is showing a full size image. If we were to click the blog post, we get taken through to the actual post itself. And you'll notice that the header changes completely here, where it's now taking up a narrow band at the top with the content here, the sidebar, and the footer. Now, the difference here, we're looking at a post here. Now, if we look at a page with this theme, let's click here. You can see the page layout here is a little bit different. With this theme, there are no sidebars on the pages. All we have is the content area, which is going full width. And at the bottom, we have the footer. So let's have a look at a few more things that we can do to get this site looking a bit better and incorporating your own image and your own logo. Here we are on the WordPress dashboard and the first thing we're going to change is that image on the home page. So we go to appearance and we can go down here to header, which will open up an edit page for us. And it takes us straight to header media so we can start changing uh, the content here in this section. First thing we're going to do is click here, add new image. We're going to upload a file. Take this one, hit open. It says select and crop, but we're not going to really do any cropping here. We're just going to be using the whole image as it runs in the background. So we're going to skip cropping. And now we can see that image change quite easy. That was really easy to do. As you can see, as it scrolls up, stays in the background. That effect is called parallax where the image stays in one place, yet the content scrolls over the top of it. Okay, let's go to the sidebar here and roll this one. Let's add another image. Again, we're going to ignore the cropping. Let's 
and we're going to select randomize uploaded headers save and publish then let's take a look at the front page by refreshing which means every time you refresh the page you'll get a different image so you can load in several images of the band so when people arrive at your website they'll see a different image each time which could be quite cool so let's see what we can do about now adding your logo to this image let's go back to customize and if we press this arrow here we go back to the listing and we can see site identity if we click that we can now here have an area here where we can upload a logo Now, we don't want to crop it, so we need to make sure we're displaying the full logo here. So I'm making that go full width, hitting the crop image. And now we can see it appear in here. But we've also got these lines here. If we need them, we can utilize them in a different way. But we can also remove them from, the, from this point anyway. Now let's save and publish. Go back to the viewing of the front page refresh and now you have your logo on the front page too and now if we go back to the customize page and click here you can see all the other options available for customizing this 2017 theme now let's go back to the dashboard There are two things here in the sidebar that we're not going to really need. One of them is the marketplace, and the second one is Optin Monster, as we are using Aweber to be collecting and managing our email subscribers. So let's delete those. They are plugins, so let's go to the plugins page and look at them. And it's quite easy to do. As we scroll down, we can see two plugins here the mojo marketplace and the opt-in monster so we deactivate them and then we can delete them from the system Obviously, this is the area where we're also going to be installing plugins as well, but we'll cover that in a later video. So there is one more thing that I want to show you. So you must realize when you're actually building your website, selecting the theme and the styling may take some time. And you may come across many websites and think, Oh, I wonder what they're using to create their website. Well, there is one useful application that we found on the net that allows you to analyze other people's websites to see what they've used to build them. And this is it here. And you'll find it at wpthemedetector.com. All you need to do is to put in your URL of the website that you're looking at, and it will give you the information you need i.e. what WordPress theme they're using, and even what plugins they're using to build their site. This is a very, very useful tool. So that's about it from us now, and I look forward to catching up with you in a later video. Thanks.